Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, I'm going to be covering how to connect outside data sources for continuous monitoring and reporting for cloud app security. I've done subsequent videos you guys can check out of a high level demo and overview just to get acclimated to the feature set here. But this would be one of your first starting activities after you get into the service or purchase a trial or some of the paid offerings. So you can come in here to the Cloud App Discovery dashboard. And after you've connected a data source, or if you've connected a snapshot, it'll report back all the applications and you can go through and see all the metadata associated with those applications. And usually you wanna do this if you are going to connect an outside data source, just so you can see that it's parsing your log file correctly. So you can come over here and you can click on this button here to open up a new page to create a new snapshot report. You can name the report whatever you'd like and then you can choose your on-premise application or appliance. In this case, you could choose from the list from the drop-down here like Barracuda, things like that. They have a lot of popular ones here. And from there, when you select that, you can verify that you're parsing the correct data and you can even get a sample log uh, to view as well too just to make sure that your network log file matches the correct format for this appliance. So you can also anonymize the private information which will just basically just anonymize all the usernames so you can just see all the applications that are in use in the network and see the risk associated with those applications as well too, detect shadow IT and do all these things. So once you're done and you've verified that you can go ahead and just upload the snapshot here and you can then consume it. It'll take a couple minutes to generate the full sample within here, but after you're done, if you go back to the discovery dashboard, you'll be able to see the snapshot report and all the metadata associated with it, and it'll be listed here underneath, so you can, you can detect these things. The second way that you can do this, which is longer term, obviously, what you want to do is the continuous automatic reports that come through and so you can click here and what you would want to do here is first add a data source so you would say something like Barracuda in this case if you're using the same appliance you can choose that one and then you can choose the receiver type you know, like FTP or a syslog over TCP or TLS um, you might have a syslog server on-prem or on Azure even that you're using to connect with and you can also anonymize again information that you do there. Once you've added it here, you go into the log collector section and when you click on log connector, you'll put in a name, you'll put in the IP address or the fully qualified domain name, and then you'll choose your data source. So I'm just going to put in... So after you click create, you can then see the next steps here, which give you a deployment guide for installing the log collector on your host environment and on the hosting machine, um, showing you the command you'll need to run here to import the collector configuration. And then you can follow these final steps here to finalize that connection itself. And the deployment guide takes you into this page for the actual configuration, depending on what type of platform you're using. I mean, it's just a Windows server, so it gives you the prerequisites here and it shows you what you need to do to install these things and get everything added, including the steps that I'm walking through right now. And then you get into the on-premise deployment of your machine and going through all of that and making sure it's connected correctly. Back in the portal, after that's done, it's gonna give you another prompt to copy this command again. It'll have the status as unknown. It's not complete yet, but once you've done the on-premise steps or things on your host environment, you would be able to come back in here and see that it's been created with a green checkbox. You can additionally come in to the governance log and you'll start to see these things pull through as far as the, the log information. And um, you can just search for the action type of the parse cloud discovery log. And it'll show you, you know, where these things were were coming from and if they were successful or not. And this one is just looking at this other environment I had connected with Cisco. 
So that's one way to do the continuous log discovery and they'll, they'll show any failed information here, but then that's when you can actually start creating policies and things like that off of the information in here. You cannot really do that automatically with the snapshot reports. Yet another environment I wanted to show you here, the other way to do this is connecting the Defender ATP service. If you're using Defender ATP as your EDR solution in Microsoft, and this allows you to do the continuous discovery just for devices that are enrolled in the Defender ATP service. It's actually really easy. In the Defender ATP Security Center here, you can simply just go under the settings, go to advanced features, and scroll down till you see the Microsoft Cloud App Security toggle and just turn it on. Uh, it is really all the other configuration you have to do if the device is already being enrolled into the Defender ATP service. So it's very straightforward toggle to go and do. I found that the information starts reporting back after like 12 hours. So just be patient with it. I thought I might have done something wrong or missed something, but that was the main piece. In the Cloud App Discovery Admin Center, you can come here and you'll see that once it does start reporting back, you'll see the window 10 endpoint users. So that's everything I wanted to showcase for you guys today on connecting data sources to cloud app security. Stay tuned for my next video where we'll be walking you through setting up a conditional access app control policy within the cloud app security admin center as well. Thanks guys. Have a great day.